welcome back to the Illinois Fighting Illini Dynasty. That's right, we are back. I am happy to announce that the Dynasty is back on the channel. We are here to finish Season 5. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know a lot of you have been fans of the channel, fans of this Dynasty, who have stuck around after the Dynasty was put on pause for what's been nearly almost a year since I last put out a Dynasty video. We are about a little over a quarter of the way through Season 5, and it is time to restart the Dynasty. I've been floating it out there on the channel the last few weeks, and for those of you who have been sticking around, thank you so much. It means a lot, and it's what's partially kept me motivated to keep this Dynasty going and to finish Season 5 because it's been quite a season so far and it's one that's looking very promising for Illinois. I'm always one to make sure that I start what I finish and that is going to be the case for season five. It is going to be finished and it starts now. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of a recruiting episode, give you guys a little bit of a refresher of what's gone on in the season so far. Then we will wrap it up with a preview of our next game, which will be week six versus the Michigan State Spartans. So let's give us a little refresher here. So Illinois started off the season with a convincing 27-6 win versus Coastal Carolina in the season opener at home. It is going to be deadly this year. First down and goal now, Peoples. He's going to loft it to the end zone, and he's got Zach Anderson. Touchdown, Illinois. Then we went on the road in conference play to meet the new Big Ten foe UCLA. A dicey second half comeback from the Illini in a defensive battle. Second down and goal now. Illinois still in the I formation. Peoples, he's going to toss it out to McRae. And McRae's got room. Touchdown, Illinois. The first lead of the game. Peoples under center, it's going to be McCray, and he's got the first down. Illinois comes in to Southern California and knocks off the UCLA Bruins. Then we took care of business against a surprisingly pretty good Army team that ran the triple option. Fourth down and five now. Can the defense put the nail in the coffin on this one? Fuller looking to throw. He's going to step up, move to his right. He's trying to get it himself, and he can't do it. And Illinois gets the turnover on downs. Then we went on the road in week four in a big non-conference slate versus Florida State. And Illinois had an incredible fourth quarter comeback, overcoming five turnovers to beat the Seminoles at Doak Campbell Stadium. About how good this receiving core is for Florida State. They can go up and get it. This one is batted down and it's hauled in. Are you kidding me? It's a touchdown for the Seminoles. What is going on right now? And Illinois once again is going to score five wide here on first down. Peoples backing up, he fires over the middle, it's Marquardt, and the ball is free! This is unreal, it's recovered by Florida State. This just cannot happen right now. Illinois going five wide. Second down and ten. Peoples, he's going to fire over the middle, Marquardt, touchdown, Illinois! One second left. This is the final play of the game. Butler. He's going to step up and fire it downfield. And that one is knocked away. Illinois survives. They come back and they overcome five turnovers to beat Florida State at Doak. And then we left off after a pretty solid effort against an 0-5 Rutgers team that definitely punched above their weight class in week five. Now this one is all but over, 20 seconds to go. Bass steps up and he's gonna be sacked again. Get that man in an ice bath ASAP. Bass is sacked multiple times on this drive and that'll be the ball game. 
And that brings us to today where Illinois is sitting at number one in the polls as of this week. Illinois with 37 first place votes. This is our second time being number one in this dynasty. And we will look to continue the hot start to the season. It's incredible where we have come starting from season one in this dynasty. And now we're here sitting atop college football. And we're going to look to keep it rolling as we go through here season five. Let's turn the page here and get into recruiting. Remit Thompson at wide receiver. He is Illinois' top target for this positional group in this class. You can see Remit Thompson is a four-star wide receiver out of Sanford, Florida. Illinois likes him a lot because he has that elite speed. You can see the 95 speed grade there for him. Some of the catching grades, not so great, but he's also got an elite route running grade there at 87. So Remit Thompson, he's got the height at 6'3", 215 pounds, and he can possibly play maybe a little bit of slot, a little bit of interior wide receiver. We'll see what Illinois does there with him. Moving on to tight end, Illinois is in a position where they need to recruit a big time tight end in this class, but unfortunately the Illini whiffed on their top two targets in Kelvin Allen, a four-star recruit out of New Jersey, and then Gary Mullins, a highly rated four-star recruit out of California. Both of them would have been great additions for Illinois and definitely would be futures of the program in the coming years at that position. So Illinois is left to their backup option, which is Josh Smith. Josh Smith is a 6'6", three-star prospect out of Green Acres, Florida. He's a receiving tight end, but he has the size, 6'6", 252 pounds. So he's definitely a guy that has some great upside, but is definitely a developmental prospect. And he's a guy that's going to have to sit behind for a few years before he moves up in the system. At guard, John Little, a three-star prospect out of California. John Little, of course, is Illinois' top target at this position. It's a position where Illinois needs to recruit some bodies as there is a lot more upperclassmen that are on the roster currently at this position. John Little is a terrific run blocker, not too shabby as a pass blocker either. And he's a gem prospect. He was one of the original recruits added to the preseason board. So Illinois is in a battle right now with UCLA. They have a healthy lead on the Bruins in order to land John Little. And we will see where he makes his decision here in the coming weeks as he visits both of those schools, who are now Big Ten opponents. Moving over to defense. Defensive end, Jonathan Greer, four-star pass rusher out of Woodland, California. Illinois really focusing on the pipeline states in this class. Jonathan Greer, we are in a battle right now with Texas Tech to land him. And it's going to be a battle that might come down to the end. Greer is a guy that definitely could play after a few years of development. And he's a guy that would definitely add to a pretty good Illinois defense, one that is the best in the country right now. You can see that he's visiting both us and Texas Tech late in the season. This is a recruiting battle. It's going to come down to the wire. It should be exciting. At defensive tackle. So at this position, Illinois is going after Dustin Timmons, who's a four-star recruit out of Stewart, Florida. You can see the Florida Sunshine State trend here with this recruiting class. Dustin Timmons, unlike his counterpart, John Little at offensive guard, he is favoring UCLA. It's a battle between those two right now. It's kind of ironic how their first year in the Bay 10, all of a sudden we go head to head with UCLA. We beat them, of course, earlier in the season in week two. But unfortunately for Illinois, Timmons is favoring the Bruins, visiting both of those schools late in the season. But the good news for the Illini is that they've already landed their top target at this position in Frank Harris, who is a four star recruit out of Jollyville, Texas. He's a number 10 defensive tackle in the class, so Illinois is already pretty set at that position. Likewise, at outside linebacker, Chad Landrum was one of the first recruits to commit earlier this season out of Texas as well. So Illinois is sitting pretty there. And then at strong safety, Illinois went after Brandon Miller, a five-star recruit out of Ormond Beach, Florida. You can see he's a 6'5", strong safety, a guy that's got an 81 overall grade. He was the number one recruit on Illinois' board for this class, and unfortunately, he committed to Texas. So even though Illinois was in the mix for Brandon Miller, a five-star prospect, it's still schools like Texas that have the recruiting edge over Illinois despite the success of the school. So unfortunately, we are going to have to remove him from the list, but he would have been a guy that could have started next season had he committed to Illinois. 
So lastly, let's look at the athletes. Illinois is going after a plethora of athletes here. Let's start with Chris Johnson. Four-star guy out of Jackson, Michigan. Johnson can play both running back or wide receiver. That's what Illinois is looking to play him at if he was to commit. And as you can see with those grades there and the fact that Johnson is a pretty high overall at rated athlete, he is favoring Illinois very heavily. He is very likely to commit to the Illini in the coming weeks. So he'll be a great addition to put at one of those skill positions for this recruiting class. Next, Steve Nelson out of Minnesota, another four-star four -star prospect. Steve Nelson is a guy that can play a variety of positions. This guy is the true definition of an athlete. He's also a gem prospect, one of the original additions to the board. Nelson can play quarterback, running back, wide receiver, or DB. So this is the type of prospect that Illinois really likes. They have a lot of options to go here with Steve Nelson. You can see that 91 throw power there at the bottom. Oof, this guy's got a cannon for an arm. It'll be interesting to see what Illinois does with him if he even commits, because right now Wisconsin is the favorite to land him. Next, Brandon Fields. Brandon Fields is a guy that Illinois is really, really interested in. Even though he's just a 71 overall, look at the bottom, the throw accuracy of 85 there. Brandon Fields is a guy that can play quarterback, wide receiver, or defensive back, but Illinois envisions him being a quarterback. That 85 throw accuracy is rare for an incoming freshman. That is definitely a good grade to work with. And he's also 6'3", 225 pounds. This guy has to be a quarterback in this system if he is to commit to Illinois. So taking a look here at the pipeline states, I kind of briefly mentioned this earlier. Illinois is really focusing on maintaining their pipeline states and getting as many as possible for next year. So taking a look at the map, Illinois is kind of focusing outside of their home state really going heavy in the states of Michigan, Florida, Texas, and California. It, Illinois is trying to maintain Florida and Michigan as pipeline states, in addition to add Texas as a pipeline state, which they are very well in the works of doing so with two commits from the Lone Star State already. So let's wrap this up with the Michigan State preview. I know a lot of you are anxious to get back into gameplay, and that'll be the next video up on the docket. So let's preview Illinois versus Michigan State. So the Spartans come into this game with a 4-2 record. They're undefeated in conference play at 3-0. They are, of course, a division opponent now with the realignment. And Illinois is going to be a healthy favorite in this game. After all, it is in Champaign. Michigan State, you can see that their defense is a little bit higher rated than their offense, which hasn't put as many yards up per game as some of the more prolific offenses we've seen so far this year. Their quarterback, Tim Haynes, not a bad at touchdown to interception ratio there. He can also run a good bit. So overall, not really any eye-popping stats here from the offensive side of the ball for Michigan State. And taking a look at their schedule here, kind of a mixed bag from the Spartans. They lost by 20 points to Middle Tennessee State, who, yes, they are number two in the country right now. If you missed that from earlier in the video, yes, the Middle Tennessee State is number two. I mean, they did beat Michigan State, who was 3-0 in the Big Ten by 20 points, so that says something. The Spartans then went on to beat number 7, Nebraska, handing them their only loss. The defending national champions, they beat them. Then they lost to Louisiana Tech. I really don't understand what's going on here, but it's safe to say that Michigan State plays up to their opponents. You can see they also dubbed Ohio State at home by 20 points, so... This is a Spartans team that plays up to their opponents and then they play down to their opponents. And unfortunately, if you're Illinois, when you have the number one next to your name there, you're likely to get Michigan State's best effort. And that's what I think Coach Deal and the players should expect from the Spartans, especially after last year when Illinois drubbed Michigan State 34 to nothing in East Lansing. So the Spartans are a team I fully expect to come into this game into Champaign with a chip on their shoulder. So there you have it. The next game against Michigan State is all queued up and ready to go. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, for watching this video. I'm so happy to bring the Dynasty back. It's been bugging me for a few months now. I've wanted to bring the Dynasty back, but I really have been busy with everything in personal life. Started a new job last summer. That's the primary reason why I had to put the Dynasty on pause in the first place. So I've been very, very busy with my personal life. But believe me, I've wanted to 
get this dynasty back online and finish season five for a while now. And I'm very happy now to be able to do that. So thank you guys again so much for the support. Leave a comment. Please leave a comment if you're excited for the dynasty to be back. I know a lot of you have been hitting me up over the past few months asking me when this was going to return. And I'm looking forward to the next video when we get into game action. I'm sure the rest of you are. Week six versus Michigan State. Number one, Illinois with the home crowd behind their backs hosting an undefeated conference opponent. See you all next week and have a great day.